Good morning and welcome to Hickory Plains Church of the Nazarene, July 28th, 2024. It is such an honor to worship with you. And if you would, push the like button on our videos and feel free to share those. Uh, they are set so that can be done. Well, my references today are from Ephesians chapter 6, the full armor of God, and Exodus 14.14. 14. If you need to pause the video while you find those when the time comes, just you know, feel free to do that. You are invited to do so. <clears throat> but this summer, my children's lessons have been on the full armor of God. I also spent four days at children's camp listening to over 200 children worship and learn biblical truths through Bible stories and characters. I've been attending church camps since I was an infant, only having missed a few years here and there. It was at children's camp that I gave my heart to Jesus, and a few years later I asked the Holy Spirit to fill me and to keep me close, and I gave God full access to my life at an altar at church camp. Years later, again at camp, I felt the call to full-time Christian ministry. So yes, church camp is very important to me. It has always been like a mini revival. And with all of that running through my mind, I've decided to extend my children's lessons on Ephesians chapter 6, but I've also been doing a daily devotional series called the Bible Recap. Each day I read a passage and then there is a commentary or two that go along with the reading. One big aha I have gained is that God speaks so often about the things He does, but we live oblivious to the constant connections throughout His narrative. One such example is in Isaiah 43, 2, and it's just the second half of that verse. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. In the years following this revelation by Isaiah, Israel and Judah were wiped off the face of the earth, and many brilliant and talented young men were delivered into the court of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Three of these young men refused to bow down to an earthly idol, and so they were thrown into a fiery furnace where a fourth being was seen to protect them. Was the fire hot? Yes, others perished, but not the faithful. They were not set ablaze. Today I want to connect the verse of Exodus 14.14 14 to the full armor of God as written by Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. The setting for Exodus 14.14 14 is this. The Pharaoh of Egypt woke up to a world without servants, and so he quickly summoned his fighting forces and went after them. When the entire Egyptian army was found to be marching after the Israelites, they were terrified. They became angry and belligerent with Moses. Were there no graves in Egypt, so you brought us out here to die? They moaned because they chose freedom over continued slavedom. Moses assured them, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, will never, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, you need only be still. Indeed, the angel of God traveled between Israel and Egypt's finest as they crossed on, dry, on a dry seabed and then turned to watch as Pharaoh and his entire military perished below the waves. In the instructions to put on the full armor of God, there is once again the command to be strong. From Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18, 10 through 18, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand firm, uh, to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. First of all, give credence to the fact that in both of these instances, Exodus and Ephesians, the objective was to protect the faithful. First, slavery to a false god, Pharaoh, and in the second, 
spiritual enemies, the dark powers of this world, and the evil forces in the spirit world. God is all about sustaining those who will believe. It is his delight and joy to take care of us, but evil is real, and Satan will go to any length to completely destroy anything, anywhere, anytime, and any way. Paul's letter to the Ephesians differs considerably from his other letters. This was not a friendly correspondence. It was a sermon that focused molding and directing the character of Christ's church. It was written from Paul's house arrest in Rome. This church was predominantly Gentile, and there is a clear situation of the Gentile Christians looking down on their neighbors, the Messianic Jews. Revelation 2 states that the church of Ephesus was discerning and enduring, but struggled to love their fellow man. Although Paul had been specially commissioned to work among the Gentiles, he had no patience for a divided church and emphasized God's glorious plan to bring people from every nation and background together in Christ, all on equal terms with a oneness demonstrated in personal relationships and Christian behavior. Paul does not pretend it will be easy to maintain these standards. The fight is on and we must have and be able to use the spiritual weapons that God has provided. And in this, we have all we need for defense and protection to stand against all foes. So let's go back quickly and unpack this outfitting, this direction to clothe ourselves in the manner the Holy Spirit directs. We must stand not just against the temptations of our own flesh and blood, but more importantly, the devil's schemes and the rulers, authorities, and powers of darkness. You ask me if I believe in spiritual warfare? Absolutely. But the devil has an arsenal full of gaslighting to make us look for danger in all the wrong places. So get your armor and you will know where to look and what to look for. Begin with truth. This is my favorite aha to understand that any version of events or facts other than exactly what happened is an event effort to manipulate the world to my will. Thus, I am putting myself where God must be, and by association, I am blasphemous. Folks, buckle up because truth is important. Genuine authenticity, sincerity, and integrity is so important. You are vulnerable to destruction if you refuse to embrace and engage in it. Yet, you are totally safe and at peace in the midst of it. There is only one truth, and God is at the center of it, because truth is His very nature. Trust truth. Next is the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate protects your beating heart, your life's blood. At the moment you are saved, God declares you to be righteous. The broken relationship between you and him has been reconciled by the sacrifice of Jesus and your confession that he is Lord and Savior. The grace and mercy of Jesus makes our righteousness by means of Jesus' own righteousness possible. The price for your eternal life has been paid, and you are standing in the presence of Jesus' righteousness. So clothe yourself in righteousness. How beautiful is that? And then your feet must be fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of, yes, peace. Long story short, the gospel of peace saved you from death. You are a child of God and no one can take that away from you. Now it's up to you to spread the good news with others. Be vigilant in your endeavors to be ready in all seasons and in all places. These shoes are for defense and offense. They determine your position where you stand. The ancient soldier would have had cleats. So dig in with peace and share the good news or get moving and do the same. Be prepared to share and or defend your hope. Let's talk about the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. In Bible times, the shield of the warrior would have been as big as a door covering the entire person. It was the first element of defense against the enemy, deflecting and extinguishing flaming arrows. But it could also be used to push forward. Many soldiers could also stand together and completely enclose themselves from their enemy. Oh, how like the fellowship of the faithful to surround, stand together, and protect each other. Or together, finally, the shield displayed your identifying crest. Whose army are you in? Well, you're in the army of the faithful and victorious God, the one true God. And then there's the helmet, and it's the last piece of armor that a soldier puts on. 
It protects the command center of the entire body, not just physically, but mentally too. If the head is injured, the soldier is out of commission. The helmet of salvation is representative of an assurance that salvation is the impenetrable defense of our enemy's best efforts. The body can be destroyed, but the soul cannot be killed, for it is eternal. And that promise is found in Matthew ten twenty eight. And then there's the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is only mentioned once in Scripture, here in Ephesians chapter 6. It is a weapon of war that is both offensive and defensive, and it requires some training or discipleship. As Christians, it is our responsibility, it is a personal responsibility, to know God's Word and to proactively train oneself to live in Christ's character and fulfill the Great Commission to go. Church is important, but daily devotion and Bible study is as well. And finally, above, all above, <clears throat> and finally, all of the above is in vain without the connection of prayer. Pray on all occasions, in all ways. Pray for yourself and for others. And in this, you will find your boldness, your strength, your best self. Exodus 14.14 14 states, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. We must radically and completely clothe ourselves with truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word, and prayer to find the empowerment to victoriously stand and live our daily life. But no, the battle has already been won. A victor is declared, and he has you resourced to stand firm and come home when you are called. Until then, make Satan sorry your feet hit the floor. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, I do thank you for these words of wisdom. Thank you for giving us the obvious that we can clothe ourselves in your gifts to stand firm against this world. Oh, if we could only be saved and then Satan leave us alone, but it doesn't work that way. Once we are saved, we must clothe ourselves in your strength and power with your resources. Thank you for that. Dear Heavenly Father, you are our sovereign God, and we worship you for that. But oh, how we praise you for your mighty works, for your gifts, and the mighty things that you have done. We are in awe of your grace and mercy, and we thank you for giving us that in your Son's holiness, righteousness, and in his name we say, amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You are so loved. Amen. <laughs>